Sorry, I'm late. Okay, I don't think we've got a lot of new news. We promoted the voice update viewer, which gets a new version of the SL voice executable. And uh, that is has fixes for voice activity detection. So we'll we'll have that out there. And I think, but have not tested, of course, that it um, that it, that it that you could put that SL voice into a viewer that was otherwise up to date with viewer release. Um, Well, you'd have to be running the voice viewer, uh, but yes, that should fix it. Right. Now, they actually, as far as we know, the vo the the bug was entirely on the sending side. Oh, so well it's, then, it's whoever's it talking fixes VR. to be running it, right? So it, it it probably does fix Veer. The 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 effect was much more noticeable for Mac users than it was for Windows users, and he's usually a Windows user, but uh, but I but it it was better for even for them. So yeah, I've used it the last couple of weeks at the content creators meeting and didn't get as many complaints about being inaudible. So that's probably a good sign. Oh, good. Yeah. So so that's. That's out there. Um, there are probably at some point will be some more changes to how voice connects to the viewer, but uh, it's that's not an urgent thing. So it'll be a next time we're touching that part of the code anyway. Um, try and improve the security and robustness, robustness a little bit further. Um, but other than that, we don't have any voice changes in the pipeline. Um, and uh, let's see. We're going to have some changes coming to change how uh, the viewer should respond to um, possible loss of synchronization of the system of the inventory data. So right now, if the viewer sees that it doesn't have an outfit folder, for example, it just creates one. Um, we think that's actually the wrong thing to do. Um, well, it will fix, we, we hope, it will contribute to fixing many things that look like inventory corruption, but aren't. Uh, that is, there seem to be a bunch of conditions under which you get back incomplete data, inventory data at login time, and then the viewer tries to fix it and is just adding to the problem. So um, we've got a new, we, we've got improved ability to correct partially messed up inventories on the on the server side and we've we're going to make some changes to the viewer code so that it doesn't contribute to creating them if your inventory cache doesn't agree with the servers the right answer is to get better data from the server and and fix it and if you're missing one of any of the system folders that's a pretty good indication that you didn't get complete data because those folders are almost always there on the server side so um, that's it, it's you know it's kind of a shift in strategy from trying to fix it in the viewer to trying to fix it on the server, and we're and, and we're making a series of changes to do that. There will be a there will be a viewer that has those changes um, sometime fairly soon, 
And uh, yeah, it's actually the viewer that's doing the duplicating, usually. Um, so so it should cut down on, on the duplicating. Uh, the new inventory fix transform that we can that support can run for you on the server side definitely fixes any time that there's a duplicate system folder. Uh, and it does so without losing anything. It, it combines the contents. So yeah, the you know we've had a couple of rounds of of uh, assorted problems with accessing the inventory. It's not that the inventory itself has had any problem at all. It's that we've had a problem connecting to it, as April explained in her blog post the other day. Uh, but it turns out that when that's happening, both login and the viewer can create folders that didn't need to be created. And that adds to the confusion. It doesn't actually do much in the way of, it doesn't do anything in the way of permanent harm, but it does make the inventory look messy and confusing. So and it sometimes makes it looks as though things are missing because the viewer's only paying attention to one copy of the of the folder um, and ignoring the contents in the other one. So we're we're gonna get that it out. It'll it'll require a few changes in a few places, including some changes to the viewer. We will keep those changes in a branch of the drone so that you can pull the, right, yeah, the duplicated cough is a particularly bad one um, in terms of the user experience. So, um, yeah, all they have to do is push a button and say, next time you log in, it'll get correct. Um, the, so we're, we'll, we'll keep those separate and hopefully you'll be able to get those fixes integrated quickly and smoothly. It'll improve everybody's experience quite a bit, I think. So that's that's a big one to be watching for um, in the near, hopefully near future. Um, I don't, I don't think I can think of any other breaking news that we've got. Um, at the moment, we have, what, four viewers in RCs? Let me bring up my list. Yeah, so we just put out an, an update to EEP and an update to the render branch. And there are, um, another maintenance viewer and the ordered shutdown viewer are in the QA pipeline having merged up. There will also very shortly be a Visual Studio 2017 viewer, we hope. It is having a little trouble getting through QA. But. So that's, that's on its way. Um, and Shortly after that one, we'll have an update. When, when that one is has gotten through the RC process, we'll have an update that updates a CEF. So there's a lot of stuff kind of waiting in the wings. We're trying to try and get a bunch of it out. So that's that's the news as we have it right now. Uh, any, <laughs> any topics, issues, questions, concerns, whatever. What was the rationale for putting a build fail on a missing library? The rationale for putting a build fail on a missing library. Um, because if you don't have the library, you can't link it. I don't know. I, what's the specific case you're you're thinking of well the voice viewer that was recently released had a change set to that effect that it was a python change to 
if a library was missing in the list or in the manifest. Oh, right. Well, it, was, it wasn't just the library. It was anything. If the, if, right, you're right. Um, if, uh, this, so this is for, for those who, who didn't trip over it, I did. Uh, the, the viewer manifest Python script is the thing that actually builds the install, you know, packages up the files and rearranges them in the right shape and then builds the installers or the, or the, the system image, the disk image for Max. Uh, and it turned out that if the if the manifest said there's a file that belongs in the installer belongs in the in the tree it's constructing and that file didn't exist then it would just blithely continue and let let your spec be wrong and not even put out a warning about it um so um since i am of the Specification should be correct in both directions. School, um, uh, it the behavior of the manifest system now is that if you tell it to include something in the in the contents of the package it's building, and that something doesn't exist, then it will fail right away. So that you don't waste the time building the rest of the installer and then discover at runtime that you didn't have what you needed. The uh, um, if if the specification line is a wild card, then it will succeed as long as something matches the wild card, but it will fail if nothing matches the wild card. So if you tell it to include the contents of a directory and there's nothing in the directory, that will, what that will fail. Um, so that's just a the the rationale is that I prefer rigor. Um, so that was actually my change. And in the course of debugging it, I found a few other things that it was that were old and specified as should have been there in the packages and they weren't. Uh, evidently, we didn't actually need those, but uh, the, the, the new voice package used a different set of library. When I, when I changed things, it, it was looking for libraries that the new voice viewer doesn't need anymore. Well, the warning that it put out into the log seems sufficient to me. If you were something missing, you can go over and investigate. Uh, well, you're you're better about reading warnings than some Lindens are, I guess. Uh, but that was that was why I did it. Was just. If it specifies that something should be there, it should be there. Uh, Kitty, we've thought about that. We just haven't actually done the experiments yet, uh, other than a couple of individuals locally. Um, we we have we have considered it and. We'll probably do it eventually, but it doesn't seem like something that's a big rush. And almost certainly won't do it before the end of the year, the calendar year, because we've got an awful lot we're trying to pack into that time. And fooling with the with the build farm is not something that is done quickly or easily. So we'd rather have people spending spending the time elsewhere. But it is kind of out there on the list of things we'd we'd like to be able to do. Yeah, right now our uh, our auto build person is plenty busy with other things, but I think it's a it's a good thing to be thinking about in the pipeline. Yeah. We do have a um auto build uh the the Python auto build itself. Uh there's a new version of that that's working its way through the uh, testing pipeline that is Python 3 compatible. It will it will work on either Python 2.7 or Python 3, 5, or 6, or whatever it is that they've been using. Um, so uh, that'll be auto build version 1.2. Uh, and it's 
the the repository for it I think is visible. Um, but in any event, it will be the default auto build starting sometime pretty soon. Where we've been using it on the uh, Visual Studio 2017 viewer uh, and a couple other places. It's we we have found a couple of issues with it as we tried to build more different viewers with it. Um, so it's not quite ready, but it's it's coming real soon. So that we will try to get out before um, the end of the year. Wow. So we all have to be cold this fall? Is that the... Or, you know, maybe Intel will fix their drivers at some point. Yeah. So do we have that? We've been discussing whether there's anything else we can do internally. Uh, QA says it's fixed by it's fixed by downgrading to the old uh, Intel driver. We're saying the driver you have to downgrade to isn't there anymore? Yep. Yeah, fun. Also, oh, isn't so much fixed as the workaround works. Okay, well, we should probably see what we can do. There, There is sometimes a limit to what we can do about driver bugs. Can you remind me what is the fix in Firestorm? We probably should at least look at it. If you could, if you can track down those or, or just drop a note to Nikki and see if Nikki can track them down and send a note to Veer, we can, we can see whether we can do something about it. Or, or Thank post you, a Willie. comment to that issue. That would be really great. Yeah, thanks.
Y'all are awfully quiet today. Something keeps turning up my mic volume. I can't figure out what it is. Okay, well, I guess I can give everybody a half hour back. I certainly could use it. But things to do before the weekend's allowed to start. Map layer request. Uh, is that... Is that a, a web... Is that a, a, a web API? I don't know what that is. Uh, I don't remember that. Oh, we did turn off support for a whole bunch of UDP messages. If there's an equivalent request you can do another way, then that's what it is. If not, we may have actually switched off something we didn't mean to. So file file an issue and we'll we'll research it. All right. Good. I right. that name doesn't sound familiar, but it's entirely possible that we deleted a list of things and we almost certainly shouldn't be using UDP for something like that, but we'll, we'll either put it back or provide a replacement if, if it was done accidentally. And if not, we'll tell you what the, what the new way to do it is. All right, cool. Thanks. See you everybody. <laughs>